Hello, everyone. We are in the second day of Polyglota 2020 in the afternoon. And uh, now we have a talk by Marieline Benshop, right? Yeah. And she's going to tell us how to keep motivated when learning languages. Please. Great. Shall I start uh, sharing my screen? Yeah, you can do that. Yeah. OK. And there we go. OK, great. Can everyone see my screen? Just let me yes. know. Yes, yes, we can. OK, perfect. So hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I'm very excited and motivated to talk about uh, motivation. And um, I'm also very excited to be present at this conference, Polyglotar 2020. Very excited. And uh, yes, as I said today, I'll be talking about how we can stay motivated when we learn a language. And we'll also cover uh, some insights on the on a healthy polyglot mindset, which enables us to stay healthy and sane when we're learning languages. <laughs> so uh, my name is Marilyn Benskop. I'm a Dutch polyglot living in Peru. I've been living here for the past four years, and um, I've also taught languages in many countries in the world, like uh, Spain, England, Peru, and I've also, also lived in uh, New Zealand. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to be at this international conference. Let me see if this works. Yes, okay. So today we'll be covering a little bit of demotivation as well. I think it's important to analyze why we sometimes get demotivated in order to know what we can do to be motivated. Okay, so the next question is where does motivation come from and what can we do to boost our motivation and keep it high to sustain that uh, motivation. So let's start. I want to start by asking you a question and the question is, have you had this before? Have you experienced this before? Have you had that moment where you decided to learn a language and you've told all your friends and family that you were going to learn this language? So for example, um, Chinese, you told everyone, I'm going to study Chinese. And you were super excited about it. And even your friends and family got happy for you. You downloaded some of the language apps and then realized after a while that actually you don't know how to say anything, you don't remember any of the words, and you don't understand anything in the language. So, of course, that leads to you uh, getting rid of the apps on your phone, getting rid of the language in your life, unfortunately, and just tossing but potentially even your phone in the bin and being like, ciao, this wasn't for me. Now, I don't know if you've had this before, but I definitely had this before. I've even had it with Brazilian Portuguese. A little bit more than a year ago, I decided I wanted to learn Portuguese. I told all my coworkers, I down downloaded uh, language apps. And after a few months, I, I just thought, you know, this is just not gonna work. I don't remember anything. And uh, I might as well just get rid of the apps on my phone. Now I do speak it, and that's what exactly what we'll be talking about today. What can we do to not get rid of that language? Uh, another thing you might have experienced before, another type of journey, is when you're already at that intermediate level and you're trying to get to some sort of finish line. We do have to keep in mind that maybe there is no finish line in language learners, but you feel like there is one and you are focused and I'm really excited to get to that finish line and to learn uh, a certain language or at least to, to get better at it, right? So um, yeah, you do everything. You, you get the equipment, you, uh, you're ready to, to get to that finish line. But at some point it just seems so hard and you end up feeling frustrated and you're just, you know, you decide to, to give up. You decide to give up. And this, this with this intermediate plateau, this intermediate process can actually happen multiple times. 
it, it can be um, it can happen that you decide to learn this several times and every time you give up so every time there's an obstacle you give up and that is really really frustrating i've had it of course with the language as well um for example german every time i start and then i just say like oh never mind i start and i say never mind so the aim of this talk is not about avoiding demotivation but it's really about analyzing what we can do in order to not feel bad about ourselves or the languages when we get demotivated and what we can do in order to experience motivation rather than demotivation so what we can do to to improve that okay so where does demotivation actually come from why why do we feel like everything is so hard and we want to just give up or not do anything well of course there's many factors but this could be a, a journey okay so let's say the first example we've seen with uh, you being super excited about learning a language and then you actually get demotivated what might happen here is that you got super excited because everything was novel and, and uh, adventurous but then once you realize that that actually you don't know anything <laughs> then you get demotivated and that process can happen so quickly it can happen overnight that you're like never mind uh, i don't want it after all the other journey, the, the intermediate plateau, as we call it, uh, is a little bit different. As I said, every time we try and every time we're like, nah, never mind. Every time we try. Again, both of these processes can make you feel really bad about yourself because you might think like, you know, I'm not, I'm not capable of learning these languages. It's not for me. Uh, what am I doing wrong? Therefore, it's important to realize that there's nothing wrong with us. There's reasons why we might not uh, be getting any outcome or why we might not be motivated. So some of the reasons is that there's very little progress. When we are putting in some effort and we see very little progress, we can think that it's impossible to learn the language or it's impossible to improve on that language. And we might think it's impossible because of our budget. We might think it's impossible because of uh, time reasons, or maybe we think it's impossible because the language is just too difficult and you're not made for it. Um, yeah, so that it can be, of course, very frustrating. Then that negative thought of it's not possible. Uh, of course leads to demotivation because if if it's impossible then why would you even bother why would you even bother getting better at it so it really all starts with little progress that is what frustrates us and what demotivates us um yeah so if you've had this before i am going to ask you something that might be a little bit confronting and for me it was as well when i asked myself why is there a little progress? Why do you feel, might you feel like you're not advancing enough? What might be the reason? And when I was learning Portuguese, uh, the reason was really that I was, I was doing little or no action. So my process started here. I wasn't doing much. So there was little outcome. And therefore, I thought that Portuguese was impossible which it really isn't if you speak Spanish. So, as I said, I will ask you to analyze why you think there might be little progress. Is it because you don't know how to? Is it because you don't know how to get better? For example, for me, when I was studying with the app, I was like, oh, well, it's actually not going so, so well, you know? So I didn't really know how to, get fluent, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not fluent yet, but I didn't really know how to learn Portuguese. Another reason why you might see so much progress yet is because maybe you're not fully committed yet. And what does that mean? What does it mean to be committed? I think there's two factors of committing. 
and it's not rational. So the reason I started to learn Portuguese a year ago was because I was going on a trip to Brazil. So I thought, okay, I have a reason, I'm motivated, I'm committed. And it didn't work because I was rationally committed, but I wasn't emotionally committed and I didn't put in the time. So committing means feeling, feeling that you are able uh, oh, sorry, feeling that you really, really want it. So feeling the motivation and uh, making time in your schedule for it. Committing also means committing with your actions. So again, putting in the effort depends on how, how committed you are emotionally and how committed you are in order to put time in your schedule for seeing progress. Another reason is believing it is impossible. Now we've seen it here, but sometimes we start the learning process thinking that it is impossible to learn a language. And I see this mainly in language in uh, countries, for example, Spanish speaking countries, as well as, uh, as Brazil, as far as I've heard, is that there might be a common belief that it is impossible to learn English. And if you've always been told that it's impossible, then of course, whether it's consciously or unconsciously, so deep down, you might feel that it is indeed impossible. You might feel that you're never going to get there. And if you think that from the start, then it means that you're going to put in little action. That might mean that you're not going to put in so much action because deep down you think, well, I'm gonna try, but I'm probably never going to get there. And the same happens if maybe you're learning Chinese and you're thinking, oh, I'm going to try, but actually deep down, I'm sabotaging myself because I don't think it's going to happen, right? Uh, I see a lot of uh, chats coming in. I can't read them now, but if uh, anything is, is wrong with the audio or slides, please do let me know. If not, I'm just going to continue. Hello, Marilyn. It's just because we have now the Brazilian Sign Language Interpreter, Great. and if people want to see the interpretation in Libras, they should click in the middle of the screen to Perfect. maximize and then uh, gallery view, and then okay. they will be able to see the interpreter, and also they can listen to the other languages. Okay, you can so continue. So cool. So cool. Thank you so much for letting me know. Um, so we've just looked at why we might be sabotaging ourselves by not really being committed, not really knowing how and not finding out how to learn and believing that it's impossible. But another thing I want to discuss is why we get so frustrated when there's little progress. Like, why, why, do, why does it upset us so much when there's little progress? And why do we get such negative thoughts? This is what I call the unhealthy mindset. And it makes you want to just, ah, it just makes you so frustrated when things don't work. And this, there's this thing in psychology that you might have heard of, the fixed mindset, is that when something doesn't go your way, so for example, you say, okay, I am really not good at a certain language. I'm really not good at German. And then your fixed mindset says, I will never be good at it which is not a rational thought because we can always get better, but we, we really believe that we can't get better. So we say things like, well, I'm not good at this language and I will never be good at it, which is, which is really not rational. And that is something that we really need to tackle in order to stay motivated. Another thing that happens when we see little progress is that we, might be thinking that there's something wrong with us. We might be thinking, well, then I'm not doing it right, right? If there's little progress, then what's wrong with me? And you might start looking at other people and seeing what they're doing. And you might be like, wow, they're making giant steps and I'm making baby steps. And you might be thinking that the grass is greener on the other side. Of course, sometimes other people can be more effective, uh, but Jealousy in itself doesn't help. Jealousy doesn't help for you to stay motivated. It's really, really demotivating. So 
Um, I've experienced these things as well. It's really, really human, but it's important to be aware of it and to be like, well, this isn't helping me. This isn't helping me. When you don't see a lot of progress, uh, progress, you can also get overwhelmed by the language and by the, the com like how complex the language is. Um, and, and that thought uh, is also not helpful. You might want to take a step back and see what you can do. Sometimes that we've been told that we can get fluent in a language in a matter of weeks. This is a thought that can really be demotivating when we don't see a lot of progress. When we don't see progress, we think like, well, I've been told that I can learn this language in a matter of weeks. So why is it not happening, huh? So we can get uh, really, really frustrated. Now, let's look at what motivation is. So we've just had the negative thoughts. Let's now get to positivity. What is there we, that we can do and what is motivation to start with? Motivation is the drive we feel uh, when we're doing something that we, we really, really want. And ha it's having a certain focus and energy. It's really something you want to do. You're eager to learn. So when are we motivated and how can we get this? Well, this is something different from what we've seen before. Motivation could start here, motivation could start here, it doesn't really matter. But what is important is how, in some ways, we can boost our motivation and it can keep on being boosted. How does our motivation get boosted? It's obviously, again, as I mentioned, through action and progress. So we've just seen where demotivation comes from. A lot of negative thoughts and, um, and, and maybe even inaction, yeah, right? Like not doing enough or not doing effective action. But with motivation, if you're motivated about a language, put in effort and when you do see progress, so we've seen, we've seen that sometimes we don't see progress, but when we do see progress, we can get very motivated. We can think, hey, I'm on the right track. This is awesome. I'm doing it right. And whenever you get that feeling, you want to put in more action. Yeah, so this would be, for example, if a Spanish person learns Catalan, it's not so difficult to learn Catalan when you already speak Spanish. So you might be getting interested. Oh, Catalan is interesting. Let me learn some Catalan. And then when you see that you're, you're having a small conversation in Catalan, you're like, wow, this is awesome. I'm on the right track. So you get even more motivated about Catalan and put in more effort. And then maybe you do something else in Catalan. And it, it becomes this whole uh, positive spiral of, of motivation. You could also call this flow. It means that you're just you're feel like you feel like you're on the right track. Everything is going perfectly, and this is this is really nice. Uh, it might not be for the long term. That's what we're going to look at now. But this is definitely the short term. If you want to boost your uh, language learning and put in a lot of action to see that progress, which motivates you. Now, what is this? <laughs> what I'm going to mention now is that at times just motivation and just action is enough there are moments when progress doesn't really matter and why is this important this is very important because as i mentioned before if we um if we think that our happiness when learning languages depends on our progress then sometimes we'll feel really frustrated right but we can have fun learning languages without focusing on the progress and when we're really really motivated about the language then progress will come by itself but also if we're really motivated we'll put in a lot of action which makes us love the language even more so this is what i call the strong desire to learn a strong motivation doesn't always need to see quick results. Results in the long term would be good enough for this. So for example, I've had students who, who have read uh, books in Spanish for, uh, for, for many years 
without caring about the outcome. They just liked the process. And so you see that motivation doesn't always depend on the progress and outcome. It just depends on also loving what you're doing, really, really being happy about the, the language. So for me, with Brazilian Portuguese, it's really the music. I don't care how many words I know today, how many words I'll know tomorrow. It's just, I love the music. So I always put in action. I always, put, I listen to music when I do the dishes, when I clean the house, etc. I just, I love listening to it. So there's always action. Another thing is being truly committed to your end goal. Okay, so this is related to Spanish. My husband is uh, Argentinian. We speak in English, but his family is obviously also Argentinian. And um, I had such a strong desire to learn Spanish in order to communicate with his family. So in the short term, I didn't care about the outcomes. I cared about working on the goal. That was enough for me. As long as I did something for Spanish every day, doesn't matter how much, uh, like how many steps I make, it's important that I do something every day because I'm committed to my goals. So this is the, the theory of today, okay? But where do we go from here? Because it's all nice, you know, just love what you're doing and just be committed to your goal, okay? And if you can also make progress. That's obviously not enough. We need to see what we can do on a daily basis in order to stay motivated. So that's where this part of the presentation comes in, how to manage our motivation. Sorry for all the text on this slide, I'll explain it now. Um, I mentioned that progress is very important for our motivation. It's mainly important on the short run and like on the, in the short run um, in order to boost your motivation. So if your motivation is low right now with one of your target languages, then this is what you can do. When you start out learning a language, small goals are very important, but even if you're intermediate and, uh, and want to become more fluent, then small goals are also useful. I'm going to give an example. For example, with Japanese, I set three small goals, of which two were uh, being able to read some words in hiragana, the Japanese script, one of the <laughs> Japanese scripts. And the other goal was uh, being able to recognize some words in Japanese animes. And just having these small goals was super useful because it was impossible without those goals to really track my progress to track if i was doing things right and because of these small goals i was able to track that it just in two weeks when i was watching netflix on a japanese anime i realized wow i'm, I'm identifying words and when i was reading some of the words on, on apps i don't think apps were wrong as long as you combine them with other things um, I was able to read some of the Japanese words as well. So just in a matter of weeks, I was able to reach these small goals, which really boosted uh, my motivation. And, and as I said, motivation is so important because it makes you feel good about yourself and the language. So I love the idea of Japanese because of, well, not only because of the small goals, but they help. I don't know who of you has heard about the 80-20 principle. Now, if you haven't, Google it. I think it's a very interesting principle in all parts of our um, lives, whether it is work or, um, or language learning. And what, they, what the principle says is that there's only a part that is very important. So there's only 20% that really, really matters. And by focusing on those, you can make most progress. You can make 80% progress. Now, this sounds a little bit vague, but let's just say focus on the most important things because they will boost your language learning. So what I did for Portuguese and what I didn't do a year ago, because a year ago I failed, I can say that a year ago I failed with Portuguese. What I did this year, so I started again in March, and what I did this year was really focusing on what I needed most. 
what did I need? I needed pronunciation and I needed words. Yeah, so identifying certain patterns between Spanish words and, uh, and Portuguese words. And so by focusing just on pronunciation and the words, I was able to start speaking within two months. And of course, I make many mistakes. I'm not fluent at all. I'm still <laughs> intermediate. Uh, I still get really shy. If you guys ask a question in Portuguese, I'll still be shy. But I am very motivated. I'm super motivated to get better at uh, Portuguese. And there hasn't been a moment since March until now where I got really demotivated. There's been one tiny moment when I got a little bit demotivated with Portuguese. And I'll explain what I did. Cheerleaders, okay, it basically means having study buddies, teachers, or some other other person like a family member that can motivate you when you get demotivated. So I have a Brazilian um, friend on Instagram who I could text when I was a little bit demotivated and I told him, I don't think this is going anywhere. Like why, why am I not seeing any progress? And then I said, it's so similar to Spanish. So I might just, you know, what is happening? And he said, yeah, indeed it is similar. He sent me a picture of how Spanish and Portuguese is like 89% the same. And just him listening to me saying it was a little bit tricky, motivated me to try it again and to be like, yeah, it is indeed, it's exactly the same. I'm gonna learn it. <laughs> So just having your cheerleaders, people that listen to you when you get demotivated is super, super useful. So hopefully some of you can meet people here on this conference and connect with others who, who might become your cheerleaders. Anyone who's learning Dutch, I'm happy to be your cheerleader. Um, another thing that we can do to see progress is committing, committing your time and energy to certain challenges or bold moves. Uh, many of you that follow me on Instagram know that I did a bold move. <laughs> I recorded a, um, a podcast in Portuguese after, so I, I started speaking it, what, maybe in May, and two months later we recorded a, a podcast, and um, that was a really bold move, and uh, I committed to it with my energy and time, and that leads to a lot of progress, because now I know a lot of words in um, in in Portuguese because of doing that podcast. Another thing you might want to do when, when you want to see progress is changing your strategies. So my goal was not to, to, um, to upset you when I said that maybe you're not, maybe uh, you're not putting in the right action in order to see progress. As I said, we all sometimes have those moments that we just don't know how to advance, how to get that, to the next level. And so experimenting with different strategies and resources always works because maybe what you were doing didn't work for you, right? So maybe change it up and see if that works. Of course, uh, putting in a lot of time leads to progress. So maybe see if you can, can make habits, like for example, every time you walk the dog, you listen to a podcast in your target language or you listen to music around the house. I don't know what you want to do. As I said, when we start learning a language, it might be really hard to uh, get to, yeah, to, to get on track. Like when we start, it, we maybe just need a little push that says, okay, this is the way. And so a teacher can really help you. We had the talk today of Magdalena about, uh, about Polish, right? So for example, she could really help you to get on the right track with Polish. If you want a session with me, I can help you with Spanish, English, or Dutch, and I could help you on the way. So having a teacher or a coach is super, super useful. Um, another thing that might be useful is having a beginner's course. There's a lot of free beginner's courses online or paid ones that could just give you that little push. Um, I did one for, for Portuguese, a pronunciation course. It was a free course uh, just for like a week. And that really helped, helped me on the way to, uh, to understanding the sounds of Portuguese, of Brazilian Portuguese. And finally, work on your mindset. And this is where we get to the part of the healthy mindset, the polyglot mindset. So what is 
better than the unhealthy mindset we've seen before is believing that things aren't fixed, that growth is possible. Of course, if you do something every day or if you make some kind of bold move, like you subscribe to some kind of program in England and, and that it could be a really bold move, of course that will make you improve on the language, right? Like a, a, it's only logical. So keeping that in mind, when you don't see a lot of progress, then keep that in mind. Because what I wanted to, uh, how I wanted to go from this slide to the other one is by saying that this is what you can do to see progress. But if you don't see progress, this is what you can do. Focusing on what you do understand. When you listen to authentic materials, for example, focus on the words you do understand and get motivation through that. Like, oh, oh, I do know that word. I know that word. That's what I do. I don't focus on, oh, I don't understand that. I don't know. I focus on the things I do understand. Um, another thing is, as I said, connecting with the community. We have Instagram, we have these conferences, we have so many opportunities to connect with people that could give you support. And obviously you can also give them support when they need it with a certain language. Apart from support, inspiration is very, very powerful. So when we see little progress, then look at people that are just a tiny bit further than you. And especially if you're a beginner, and you see another beginner speak, you notice that they make a lot of mistakes as well. And that could really be your inspiration, like, wow, I can speak the language and it's okay if I make some mistakes. That again is a polyglot mindset, accepting that it's not perfect, but that you could be inspired by others instead of jealous. Another thing is patience in the long run. So. I've embraced, as you, as you guys have noticed, I've embraced uh, Brazilian Portuguese in, in my life <laughs> through the music, through the friends I've made. And so that is, that is long run patience because I say, well, I have my whole life to get better. I have my whole life to stop speaking Portuguese and to, to learn Portuguese. Yeah? So seeing the long run is something that we often don't do. And it's a big contrast with the unhealthy mindset we've seen before. It's all about seeing the long run. It will make us feel more relaxed when we don't make progress quickly. I want to finish the presentation by saying that we can maintain our motivation. We can keep our motivation high if we love what we do and if we love our goal. Now, as I said, it's easier said than done. How do you start loving a language? Well, it's a lot through the local community. So the more I got in touch with Brazilians, the more I started liking the language. And I think it happens with any language. It's just talking to the people, talking to the locals, makes you feel more interested in the language as well, because they use the language and they use the language in such a way that might make you curious. Another thing is being in contact already with your end goal through authentic input. So it's not the, ah, yeah, I'm learning with a book and one day I'll understand everything that is said in a radio program that I like. No, it's learning with the radio program, not understanding everything, but being happy that you're on your way. You're already in the environment where you want to grow in. So uh, there's a lot of polyglots out there that learn through immersion, and that's what I'm referring to. When you create your whole environment in your target language, maybe English or Spanish or another language, you want to learn the language. You're in the environment to learn the language, and it would be like as if you're living in that country. So you really have a clear goal and motivation. And through all of these uh, points I've written down here, we see the long run. We realize that it's something that you want to keep on doing in the long run. If there's any questions, let's just uh, cover them at the end. I see that some people raised uh, their hands. Yeah, we have some questions already. Would you like to answer them now or? No, yeah. we're at the end now. So we might as well answer everything uh, okay, okay. at the end. Yeah. So uh, yeah, here really quickly about how I learned Portuguese. I already mentioned it before. Um, is through mindset. So one Dutch polyglot spoke 
broken Portuguese and that motivated me to also give it a try. But I also believed it was possible because I saw him speaking it. Also through uh, friends I made who could support me, through the music, through the people and progress. So all of these things led to uh, motivation, mindset, love for the language and progress. And finally, where do we go from here? Obviously, I'm going to answer all of your questions now, so that's where we go. And also, uh, I want to, you to know that, as I said, progress isn't the main thing in order to stay motivated. The main thing is realizing that we're humans, that we're not always productive, and that we can try out what works. You can try out some of these techniques, see what works for you, see what doesn't. And if you want to know more about what you can do when you're demotivated, on my website, uh, polyglotinsights.com, you have a roadmap. So if you do slash motivation, you can download a, a road, uh, roadmap. So if you're demotivated, you can see what works best for you in order to stay motivated. Now, that was the end of the presentation. So if there's any question, which uh, I've heard I there think you can stop sharing your screen. Exactly, so can, exactly. Yeah. If I know how to, let's see. Yeah. Can, yeah. And we can, yeah. And uh, anyone who would like to ask a question could raise their hands. Uh, I see Francisco wrote something, but now you can speak if you want, please, Francisco either English or Portuguese because we have interpretation and also because the speaker understands Portuguese. <laughs> okay, Francisco's question is, is it easy to stay motivated? Is it easy to stay motivated? As I said, I see the techniques that I mentioned as a toolbox. So when I get demotivated, I try to go through the toolbox and see what, what tool I should take out. So for example, for Japanese, um, I got a little bit demotivated because I didn't have time. So then now I'm going through the toolbox and see, should I make new small goals or should I find some music band that just motivates me so much that I want to keep on learning Japanese. So you just go through the tools you have to see uh, what is the best thing to stay motivated. Now, it's it's not easy, but once you really, really love the language, that's the, that's the best tool. And that happened for me with uh, Spanish. Uh, I was listening to Latin American music for a whole year before I could speak it. And my, my roomies at the time could confirm that, we could call them, and I'd be like, yeah, we kept on hearing these, uh, we hear, they heard the reggaeton, they heard baladas, they heard everything. Uh, that, that is the strongest motivation. Diego, please, you can speak. You have a question. Hello, my Jorlin. How's it hey, going? <laughs> I ha my question is simple. How was your, how was the experience to record, uh, of recording uh, an entire podcast in Portuguese? And mm -hmm. if you, if you, if you feel comfortable, you can answer it in Portuguese. <laughs> Estava, estava muito nerviosa, sim. Estava muito boa, nerviosa, mas acho que era muito, muito bom, muito, é, muito bonito é, e, e falar português e também tentar, porque, porque sempre estamos um pouco é, nerviosos para tentar, mas é, é muito importante tentar e fazer, não? Uh, as, as soy, ação, ação é muito importante para um, crescer. A, ação, ação é muito yeah, importante para crescer. Muito importante para crescer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think Matias wrote something, so Matias, you can turn on your camera now and uh, ask your question. Yeah, uh, Marjolaine, uh, hey, Marjolaine. Uh, the crowd's ear here. Okay, um, I, I I I wonder about. Uh, well, well, it's it's a it's extremely important to to stay motivated and to look for um, somebody who. Uh, I mean, to look for something to to link with your uh, with your motivation. For example, 
somebody learns uh, Portuguese, uh, what, what, uh, in bossa nova, or uh, French through the cuisine, or the uh, I Italian through the opera. I don't care. Or Japanese through anime and manga. I see okay. the yeah. What about what? What's your opinion about self confidence in that process? Mm -hmm. So when Diego just asked me about the uh, podcast, I said that I was a little bit nervous. And that is something that will always happen when you do something out of your comfort zone. I'm not going to lie, I was a little bit nervous before I started doing my presentation today. And that is all part of it. Like it's part of growing. It's yeah. yeah. superhuman that can do everything without feeling anything. No, I, I also feel fear. But we have to push through it because not doing what we really want to do is what some self-help books would say scarier because it leads you to you not achieving your goals. And that can be really, really frustrating. So I think that that's what I meant with the bold moves in the slide. Uh, in slides, bold moves are necessary for growth. And I think that uh, the bold moves in language learning are just going out there and speaking, knowing that you'll make mistakes, and then realizing that no one, I don't know, like no one really humiliated you or no one really made fun of you. You're still alive. <laughs> yeah. And that's that, right? In there, that, indeed. <laughs> Okay, Saleni, please, you can ask your question. Hi, Marjorie. Hi, hey. everyone. Um, uh, the point is, uh, you mentioned passion. You mentioned that you need to enjoy something, perhaps more than, more than the regular, normal limit of love would, mm -hmm. would demand, would dictate. Yeah. And... Um, have you ever found or do you have a regular partner other than your your boyfriend that you can share and uh, engage into conversation someone you you trust someone you you know that no matter what kind of mistakes happen no matter what kind of problems you will both engage into trying and refuse to go into modern language or the language that both of you know. I think you know this this partnership, this ability to find someone who's in the game with you is mm -hmm. vital. Do you think yeah. so? That's a very interesting comparison. There's many comparisons you made there. Uh, so much, yeah, we have a goal and it doesn't matter whether we struggle a little bit, we just have that goal, that's what you mentioned. And also community in a sense is, is really important in language learning. And I'm just so happy there's so many Brazilian uh, Brazilians on Instagram. So <laughs> I really found my community there. But as you said, like finding people that you could go on a journey with and, and both having a goal, doesn't matter how much you struggle, is definitely important. Okay, I have a question by Andrea Albuquerque. Which tools did you use to learn Portuguese? And how would you define the confusion between Portuguese and Spanish? Uh, because it's so similar and, and mm -hmm. your opinion as a, a not a Latin speaker. <laughs> so, yeah, I feel super Latin. I have to clarify that I live in Peru. I've been with my uh, Argentinian husband for the last, how many years? Uh, eight years. So yeah, and as I said, already in 2013, I was listening to a full year of reggaeton and baladas and merengue uh, in, in my uh, student dorm. So I do consider myself to be Latin, but yeah, okay, the confusion between Spanish and Portuguese. Well, I was uh, also present at another conference. I didn't speak there. It was the Polyglot Gathering. And uh, there, there was a talk about how we can learn languages at the same time. And uh, Elisa Olesa or something, which is an, another polyglot, uh, mentioned how we can take advantage of the features from one language to the other. And I was like, yeah, that makes absolute sense. So I started doing that with Portuguese and I realized that there's a lot of patterns that we can use 
from Portuguese and try to, um, or from Spanish and find that in, in um, the other language. So for example, in Spanish you have um, acción and in Portuguese, a stone. No, uh, so I, I, can, I can't really explain it. Like I can't really say it well. That word is just terrible. But there's other words where you really see that pattern. And uh, yeah, in Spanish it would be interesante, so te, and in Portuguese, chi. So then you find the patterns and then you just say like, okay, that's Portuguese and that is Spanish. It works quite well in my head. I don't confuse it mainly because my Spanish is C2 level, so I don't confuse it with my intermediate uh, Brazilian Portuguese. Okay, um, and is it too bad to reward yourself with good food in the learning process? <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Of course it's not bad, as long as it's, uh, yeah, just every now and then. <laughs> no, but I've seen, um, I've seen some really nice Instagram stories of people making tamales, which is something we eat in certain Latin American countries when they're learning Spanish or people eating pizza because they're learning Italian. Go ahead and sushi, just do whatever uh, makes you feel more motivated. And of course, there's some people that really like cooking. So then learning through uh, certain recipes and, you know, that, that's great. Why not? Yeah, food is motivating, right? Yeah. So, Josie, you can speak, please, and turn on your camera if you want. Sure. Um, my question is, um, do you have any tips to people that they don't really like the target language, mm -hmm. but they're learning for a specific purpose, such as work? Yeah. yeah what is the target language you're referring to for any. you? Um, let's say English, for example, Brazilian people that don't like English, but they need it like for work. Yeah, yeah. So this is a tricky one, but it's definitely uh, happening for a lot of people indeed. Uh, as I said, I kind of have it for German. I don't have that love for the language yet, and I'm still finding ways to, to get it. One of the main things is finding then an aspect of the language that you do like or certain resources. So I know certain singers in, in German that I just love. So analyzing their songs is, is so much fun for me because these are very positive songs, very, um, yeah, very, very nice songs. So then you can do the same in English. Maybe there are certain singers that have a certain message that you really like, or maybe there's a vlogger online like for example, if you're into into makeup and they flog everything in, in they do everything in um, in English, then that could be really motivating. So of course there's multiple ways, but if that doesn't work, if that isn't motivating enough, then set small goals. Because as I said, we are we are as humans looking for confirmation of that we're doing things right. So then having these small goals and seeing that you are doing it right is like Oh, cool. I am on the right track. I want more of these. So for English, for example, you could say, um, I'm going to have a language exchange with another uh, person and we're going to practice um, talking about I know, a certain topic. So then when you pre prepare for that language exchange and you do it and it goes well, then you can reward yourself with some kind of fish and chips or something. <laughs> I remember that that when I was learning German in 2008, when I started, I found that language very ugly and uh, I didn't uh, feel very comfortable with the sounds. But since I had friends in Austria and could live there to have classes in the country, then after a few months, uh, I, I found it normal now that the sounds yeah. of German and it, it becomes even beautiful. But there's two reasons why we start disliking the language. And one of it is still progress or insecurity. Uh -huh. So the reason I mentioned that about German, I don't have anything against German. It's just that <laughs> I feel insecure about the Einer, Einus, Einen, Deinen, Meine, my, yeah, I just get like, oh, <laughs> uh, so <laughs> then. <laughs> okay, uh, Jurubala, we, need to find have this here. we have a question from Jurubala, the, the founder of the Polyglot Club Brazil. Perfect. You can turn on your camera, please, and microphone. Oh Hello. my God, man! Oh, <laughs> are you that guys? Are you right? 
All yeah. right, so um, that took me some time to be able to interchange between Spanish and Italian. Have I ever passed through such a thing with languages? Sure. Yeah, do you have problems in switching between Portuguese and Spanish in the sequence, or does it take another language in between? No, but the, the brain is a very interesting thing. So what I have, um, I've translated sometimes, not professionally, just for my family, between Spanish and Dutch, because when uh, my parents-in-law would visit my parents in the Netherlands, then I would have to translate between them. And I noticed that my brain always first goes to English. So I translate Spanish, English, Dutch. And it's really not efficient, but that's how my brain works. I think it's because I learned Spanish through English. There's not a lot of Dutch resources out there in order to learn other languages. We always learn through English. Um, but with, with Portuguese, of course, if I have to translate something from Portuguese to Dutch, I would probably go Portuguese, Spanish, English, Dutch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The translation of the translation, just like yeah, we exactly. are having here from English into Portuguese into Brazilian Sign Language, yeah. yeah. Uh, Victor, please, you have a question. You can speak, Victor. We, we, you must unmute. We cannot hear you. Victor? Excuse me. Oh, excuse okay. me, I was muted. Uh, you are a very fine person, Marjorie, and it was very fantastic to see Thank you. you. <laughs> uh, I am a lover of languages. Uh, I must tell Josie and even Julian, every language is beautiful when you come to know it. It may, come, it may look ugly, but every language I learn is useful. I agree. Uh, what, I, what I would like to ask uh, Marjolaine is if she got, because I, I've learned Dutch, mainly online, and uh, I've got some motivation because now I'm, I made a magical Dutch course, but I want to, to go a step further, mm -hmm. and I go, want to go see, to reach C2 proficiency in Dutch too. But uh, what it, I find difficult is I have, uh, I watch some movies, uh, at Netflix, I watch some some things at NPO and others. I, I wish you you could ha give me some tips on where to get access to uh, abundant content, especially heard for for training in, in Dutch. I can um, I can write you later. I saw you were on the uh, WhatsApp group, right? Polilotar. Yeah, so if you want, I could write you uh, with some resources because yeah, I, I teach Dutch English and uh, Spanish, but as I said, Dutch. So I can share some resources with you if you want with uh, videos that have the transcript, so you can you can really boost your listening as well as uh, actually understanding what they said and, and checking. Um, and also, yeah, I don't know. I think this is a conversation we need to have on the chat so we can see what we can do to boost your motivation. And Gabriel okay. has a question. Uh, how do you approach goal setting by not knowing what is complex in the language? You may make the wrong choice and this could be the source of demotivation. Oh, very, very good question. <laughs> well then be flexible with your goals. Realize that if one goal was wrong, then just make a new one. There's no like, uh, the goals aren't fixed, like aren't written in stone or something, uh, set in stone. But what I think is that the, the first goals aren't about whether they're right or wrong, they're about whether they motivate you or not, because that's the reason you wanted goals, right? So with uh, Japanese, those goals, they just seemed cool to me. Like, oh yeah, I want to read some of those weird signs that I don't understand yet, and I want to be able to um, to understand some of the words in this anime that seems like a different world. So stuff that motivates you, but also really keep it easy. So I, I didn't say I want to have a half an hour conversation in Japanese with a group of natives. No, of course not like that. That would be demotivating and then you should change your goal. A little bit. Our time is almost up. So we have mm -hmm. time for two more questions. Siani? speaks Dutch, maybe you would ask something in Dutch. <laughs> hoi, hoi, hoi. Nee, 
Mijn, mijn Nederlands is niet zo goed, maar ik kan een beetje um, spreken. Ja, het maar, goed. Ja, ja, <laughs> is goed. Um, so, you give Dutch classes, right? Mm-hmm. So that, that's awesome. Um, I think Sianya is looking for a teacher. <laughs> I need to, I need to, I, yeah, I need to prove my, my Dutch is not so good yet. Um, it's very nice what you did today. I really loved your presentation. Thank I needed you. some motivation to keep going with the languages I learned. So, yeah. So, so. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank the last you. question is, uh, you told us about your journey to learn Portuguese. Can you tell us something about you in Portuguese? It would be lovely to hear. <laughs> okay. Um... And then first I need to think of what I want to say, like, uh, what do I want to say about myself? Um, então, então, eu gosto muito uh, da música, mas uh, a gente já uh, sabe isso, não? Eu gosto muito da música, de, também de uh, dançar e uh, de uh, comer. <laughs> um, Tenho um cachorro, um cachorro, um, um cachorro de quatro meses e um, é muito fofo <risos> o meu cachorro e não sei o que mais. A ah, resposta é muito fofa. <risos> <risos> oh, é, eu acho que a Salene quer perguntar uma coisa, mas depois a gente tem que fechar, porque quatro e meia vai ter outra palestra, tá? Outras duas, na verdade. Selene, ou não? Levantou a mão sem querer. Não sei. Então, então eu acho que é isso, né, pessoal? Obrigado, Maria Line, pela palestra. Thank you very much for the conversation with us in so many languages. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was great to give us some motivation to learn more languages, our uh, languages we learned before. And let's continue with Polyglotar in the next 15 minutes with two other talks. Okay, so check the schedule and let's go to the correct rooms. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye. Thank you.